First, thank you for coming for attending uh, this small topic. Actually, uh, today we are talking funny stuff. So the topic is from uh, Alibaba internal uh, best practices. So the story is simple in itself. Uh, we will tell the story about uh, in the past two years how Alibaba Group uh, transform uh, move uh, from an uh, in-house container program to the cloud native uh, architecture, which is a Kubernetes, Kubernetes, and how we address. The large scale migration uh, issues. First, uh, I'll start with uh, Alibaba's uh, background. You may already know that uh, Alibaba started to deploy the planet a long time ago. As early as uh, 2011, we call it this phase a uh, container uh, phase. So there are no uh, Docker technologies available at that time. So uh, developers developed uh, something uh, based on TLC, and there are many companies and um, Baidu they have a metric like this to address a similar problem. So this is the container phase, and our layer, but because of uh, the containers models are, are virtual, so in one part there's only one container and several. Um, uh, uh, sessions in one volume. And after 2018, uh, Li Xiang and other uh, Kubernetes members joined uh, the team. So we were promoting a Kubernetes uh, system. So this is uh, a, the starting point of uh, Ali's uh, cloud native uh, progress in 2019. We started uh, an experiment called a uh, cloud native. Uh, and Ali is about to use uh, Ali Cloud is to deploy Ali Cloud. So that is our, actually our slogan for a cloud uh, a native environment. And we removed uh, the con concept of a single container. Now we support multiple containers in one uh, port. And after all these um, um, reforms, Ali is, uh, is uh, Ali's uh, cloud technology is based on Kubernetes. I'll show you a chart based on some of the mainstream open source projects, for example, Kubernetes, uh, Helm, Operators Framework, ContainerD, CSI. All these things are part of uh, the framework. Even our monitoring system are quite a pervasive and standard thing. We have a, a container to provide a very high uh, isolation. And the cluster we are using is actually uh, an OM tool, like uh, our um, uh, framework from uh, ACK. We use uh, Kubernetes to deploy ACK. And this model is quite a, a standard in industry. I deploy a, a meta Kubernetes um, method, and then from there to deploy a multiple uh, clusters facing the users. And this Kubernetes model, we can use uh, this uh, chart to illustrate our team as infrastructure developer. We serve two clients. Ali Group, the second client, is uh, uh, the, te the technical team under the uh, Ali Cloud. So we are facing a wide portfolio of uh, clients, including the PaaS, OM systems, uh, devil tools in Ali Group, as well as uh, some of the existing and employed uh, monitoring systems. They should all be uh, docked to uh, Kubernetes, and also uh, Alibaba has a lot of uh, you know online businesses, uh, Taobao, uh, Timo, uh, etc. And some of uh, Alibaba's AI businesses, offshore businesses, are all should all be docked uh, with uh, uh, Kubernetes. So we have uh, like a ten, about ten large cast clusters. So that means you know over ten thousand uh, units and over one million containers. For some uh, companies, they only maintain a few thousand small uh, micro classes, but we are uh, moving towards another direction. In Ali, we have a complex uh, uh, structure. We cannot use uh, uh, one system for all, but we have some, some thinkings. Like our QB server, we will not uh, modify it. We will use the upper strength uh, server, because the maintenance of the server is complex. If you want to balance, uh, it will be difficult for, for us to maintain uh, uh, the server by ourselves.
And also, it, it provides a standard entry point. It's the very sole and idea of uh, uh, Kubernetes. So we, we don't want to, you know, um, inter, interfere in that regard. And as a big company, the scheduling policy must be very diversified, and the upper stream cannot uh, fully cater to the needs. We have also optimized the performances at the very earliest. One early employee said when choosing the mall, he will only take 100 samples, even if there are 10,000 available. And he will use a sample to adjust the 100 uh, 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 units. And this is a, a standard practice by using some strategies to reduce uh, the sampling quantity. And later on, we added this, uh, this feature. It uses a horror volume to change the portfolio and the, node, the, node, the quantity, of the content of the nodes is based on one idea. In the past, 10,000 sampling is required, but now not anymore. So this is about the scheduler. The scheduler is in-house developer. It can process batch as well as online businesses. So our, our mixed business is based on this uh, scheduler. And in terms of controller manager, we use the upper stream system. But uh, above it, we have an in-house developer controller. In Ali, we highlight uh, in-place upgrade. We don't want to, you know, uh, after upgrade, the container will go somewhere else. Uh, IP address and topology will change. This is uh, not conducive and deadly for uh, our business. And we're also doing a, a, a mixed, a, a multi-tenancy add-on. So it's a, it's a result of a complex computing. So every time if I update my business, it, it redistributes the resources, then this scheduler is facing a tremendous pressure indeed. So we want to ensure that, uh, you know, to maintain a foreseeable and reasonable stability. And also, we every step must be precisely controlled by our operator. I will uh, talk about it later. We have uh, separated as a, a we have uh, separated as an independent project. And for controller, first of all, it's based on its mechanism. However, we need to write one of the controller that is suitable to our usage, and also it need to deal with some requirements on that and also the other query as well. And in Alibaba, we, uh, we have some uh, projects. And we use the logic. It's based on um, its functions. And for this one, for this logic, is a special instance in Ali. And in this, and in this class, the logic class, we are going to. We do not use Doha because you can test the frequency of Doha because it's much slower. It has used a, a lot of the extra things to it, so it's meaningful to us and before we use punch container but now we have improved it and as for the cloud we use a very high ACK the CSI CNI and to make it into cloud provider and also for some of the big products it need the elasticity and also sometimes it should be flexible because this is a physical school is not easy to scale it's fixed so we need to able to borrow some resources from others so we connected with the elastic resource pool and we call the ECI and it's a uh, elastic resource pool so that it can wait it's a place where we can borrow some of the resources to fit in the scenarios so it has built up a new systems before we do not use it like that we um, and also we have a special bare metal instance just mentioned and you can see there are a lot of um, tenants in our systems and and this is virtual constant. We call it virtual virtual constant. And in this uh, resource pools, the the users are not going to use it. We have mixed some plugs in here so that the Kubernetes are able to show and expose the APIs of all the tenants. You can you can consider we have. API servers to all of these, and it has the API objects. 
It's a virtual object, and this virtual power, the virtual things, it's a small, um, but there is no nodes because all the business will be located into into the classes. So all of them are sharing the same pools, and each of them will have an independent API. So this is a virtual cursor, and this is what we are working on, and in the future it will be an open source. This is resource, our current resource model now, and it's for some of the technologies here I can introduce to it. Started from 2018, we are doing the, um, the container things. So, um, what is the subcontainer? I think of the three container, they call it the system container. It means that in this system container, apart from the competition of the business, they also have some and some others like the uh, that other support like the uh, SSHD and etc. And when you look at the rich container of Alibaba and what kind of resource we have. Like SHD, log, monetary, cash, VIP, all kind of things that we put in it, including some of the boot scripts and all etc. You don't even know who have put those things in it. And first of all, I want to set up a rich container and. Uh, uh, they will the SSH will put inside and then they're going to start their script because at that time they want to um, connect with the business side much easier. Why we want to eliminate the rich container because it has cultivated a bad mode for operations and maintenance. You can see the development will just randomly write those codes in these containers and they do not have any kind of concepts like uh, um, reading only, etc. They just write the road and the other place just write better and then finish. So we want to eliminate the rich container because there was we don't think the rich container has any problem if you are able to containerize your operations and the rich container is okay. But in our conditions now with this rich container, the operations of Alibaba's model has some problems. So starting from 2018, we start we decided to eliminate the rich container. Now we have a lot of improvement. All of our containers containers nowadays are actually lightweighted containers so that we can make it into the ports with several ports because um, upstream we have done some standardized work on our users for example in the uh, cloud native of Alibaba, uh, one of the ports will include these containers. First of all, is its business container. It's also we have some of the uh, live upgrading side side card. For example, I have an application want to upgrade it, and then it's going to load a custom uh, side card into it, and then you don't have to redo it again. Before, maybe you need to copy it to to the rich container. Now you don't have to do that because we have the sidecar. We have make a sidecar. Sidecar just work on one thing. Now you want to upgrade. Okay, so sidecar um, the input of the sidecar is upgrade content. So it's going to copy this sidecar uh, content to this because they can show the volume inside it and also we can sure they can share this log as well. So in this port, we are able to enable the upgrading as well. Next, we also have the assistant engine and also help us to fix some uh, small bugs as well. So it will include different kind of uh, ports. And all of those rich containers procedures has become one of the input here inside the ports. But there were some problems here that are unable to solve. And that is monitoring. Monitoring is actually rely on reading the documents, the files like the secure and other values as well. We need to find other way to address these problems. Originally, it's a rich container and it's a uh, working on the VM, if you want to convert it into the port, you need to show first what's the, uh, what is the booting sequence. Then we need to use a concept called Nick container. And what else is a life cycle hook. Some of the containers may be uh, earlier than others, so the, the latter booted will 
um, would need to set some of the prere uh, prerequisite conditions. So the business should first define these conditions for um, pre-start and post-start of these different containers uh, to decide which one should start first. I'll give you an example here. All the hubs should first define all the life cycle code, um, so that it can it so that it's able to run properly because we are trying to evolve to the cloud native. This is a very good path for us and we have utilized a lot of things in Kubernetes like the post cycle, container life cycle to control it. Of course, you also need to define the liveness codes and in what way that you can consider a container has been started or not. And after we have eliminated the rich container, then you will find that originally I utilized the Kubernetes, which will um, cause different impact. One is automation. Why we will find automation impacts here? Because in the rich container, once uh, it utilized system D, you are not going to know the life cycle or the application life cycles connections. They don't have any re uh, coupling or any relation between them. However, the life cycle is aligned with the app's life cycle. So you are going to identify the systems. Then the systems will be better able to um, run run this dot run self of So the documents that you are able to build up the volume very fastly. And everybody are able to focus on their own functions like monitoring. You just need to focus on monitoring work. And later, we are going to have side card operators to input the side card inside the containers. You don't have to do with it yourself. Or we have a colleague to introduce it. You can automatically put the side card in it, including the upgrading and deleting. And it will utilize it as the automated way, in an automated way, and everybody will be able to focus on their functions. So we are going to find a lot of benefits after eliminating the rich containers. And later, we are able to um, utilize it to work on more things. And uh, first is the resource utilization. And also, it's uh, something that um, some of the life cycles are similar to the containers life cycles. So we are going to have application management to manage its life cycle. And then we are able to put the data into the volume, the persistent volume. We don't, I don't have to find another place to write this. So in the future, it's going to upgrade space on the community. So. And uh, when we first built up the 1.10, later we have set to release and then to upgrade it to 1.12. And now and we have a 1.14. So you, you can see we're not going to lag behind to release of the communities because the Kubernetes is able to, for Kubernetes, you can control the minimum upgrade and changes. And next is the cloud native app management. We have a whole set of Kubernetes. And we can do some of the uh, leasing. And first, we need to define different kind of management and also relationship, and also how to deal with the multiple clusters and interaction between them. So here is the application of an operation of it. And first of all is the infra oper operations. Next is the application operations. And we need to communicate with different teams. And they need to follow the um, Kubernetes concept in its development process. And or we also need to explore what kind of definition of, definition of it. And now we are using help to define the applications. However, some of the resources are not applicable. So for example, how can we define the native resources on Helm? And this kind of resources are not able to define by the documents. It's not easy to define it. So we are still working on it and communicating in the community that whether we are able to build up uh, the application definition that is facing the cloud. It's based on cloud. Uh, 
later we are going to adjust this problem, we hope, hopefully. And as for the management, we are still doing some pilot and experiments. We have our own thinking, first we are utilizing the definition from HELP, so we need to build up a hub, an app hub, but the official app hub is not that big in China, and also there are different kinds of challenges like the GCR.io, and we need to do some localization based on this hub, and we have uh, put it in the early cloud and provide some free um, services. You can utilize this hub. and. Uh, we can uh, automatically synchronize with the official hub. And also, you can utilize some of the VR there as well. Because the uh, a cloud native GitHub is also completely open, you can utilize it there as well. And as for Kubernetes, there are different types of tools. And it's mainly the Yarned documents and how can we allocate the um, documents and also how can we configure those parameters. And we utilize the uh, help to change its change some of the definitions and also para parameters. And we have utilized Kubernetes native to um, to work on some of the changes. And it need to use the standards to do to do the decoupling. And like Jenkins, the old Jenkins, you need to start it from uh, the beginning to the end to put it into the KBS. In KBS, for example, I have an application and its documents in GIMP. And in the KBS, there are a lot of components. And they are able to automatically modify the utilization states of the applications. If it finds that I'm lack of resource and need to scale the instances number, then the operations is that they need to modify the replica. And they need to change the number of the replica to 10. And it's able to change upwards. And it, no matter where you have put your documents, write your documents, they need to write it there. It, it, if there is, a, there is a black box between the ARC and CI, for example, I do not allow you to store the format, then my HAPA are not able to change the documents. I have the YAML documents, however, it's going to be modified by the developers. It also be able to um, modify the Kubernetes. If you need the Kubernetes to change it, you should have the open protocol that could be understood by the KBS so that it can operate this process. So I think the CI and OP are able to do this communication. However, study from the source, uh, pack from the source code, and then build up different, uh, to go through different process, and then put these documents into resources, and all those generated documents could be put into the um, into Git because it has been put at the put at the Git. So we are going to have GitHub. We don't think we need to go ever further, even further. So after we put it into the GitHub, we are going to manage this process. Next, I'll talk about how our workflows is dealing our our process. Maybe uh, you're very hungry, so I'll keep it short and quick. Speaking of uh, Ali, the first thing uh, coming to mind is the November the 11th the shopping uh, day. Uh, currently, we have uh, nearly a million containers uh, on the cloud, distributed in over a hundred um, server rooms with uh, hundreds of thousands of applications. So this quantity of uh, infrastructure moving to cloud, we are facing uh, the stability and some other risk uh, factors. And we are also assisting the past platforms on the upper stream to be migrated, to migrate to the, to the cloud instead of, uh, you know, uh, past remain unchanged. Otherwise, it cannot uh, cater to our needs. 
So let's, let me talk about uh, the November 11th uh, issue. You know that um, uh, what our upper applications have done for uh, November 11th, uh, Timor and Taobao, they will share this disclose this information uh, about our infrastructure or big Kubernetes. What will it prepare for no November the 11th? So on November the 11th, the traffic is like a uh, n times of uh, daily average, even over a hundred times. So we need uh, far more resources than what we need on a daily basis. So before November the 11th, the first thing is to establish the station. So by scalable uh, res resources. First, we should uh, upscale uh, the resources before November the 11th, on one hand, to improve the resource utilization rate, and second, to uh, stabilize November 11th. Suppose we were to uh, upgrade our pod into 10,000 units, so should we rely on uh, changing the quantity of a replica? This way, the risk, because the scheduler itself does not know what applications and uh, and their uh, scalability, it can only check the current the status quo and whether it needs to be expanded or not. If we were to scale up to hundreds of thousands of parts, if we rely on this strategy, this individual uh, scheduling uh, strategy, the outcome cannot, uh, can definitely not cater to our needs. Some of the resources uh, um, overlap and some of uh, the, uh, the rules will not be uh, met. So when establishing uh, the nodes, we use an offline uh, scheduler to understand the, the status quo of the resources and then match make with uh, the hundreds of thousands of parts to enable centralized distribution. And after that, through batch placement, we Based on the, the feedbacks, we use the batch placement to enforce the resource distribution. Internally, we use the two CRD to deliver the function. One is called a batch allocation plan, the other is called a batch adoption. So batch allocation plan by its name. It's, uh, it creates buffer parts with uh, candidate nodes. That is to say, in this uh, uh, flexible resource pool, if we were to uh, create uh, hundreds of thousands of parts, we cannot guarantee that it, the first uh, distribution is in line with our expectation. So the batch allocation plan allows uh, the creation of a buffer parts until we uh, distribute the resources in a, at a reasonable level. When this, when it meets our expectation, we will uh, re enforce that uh, action. So in this way, the overall resource distribution meets our expectation. And if you're familiar with the Kubernetes, the default release strategy is to recreate part. The problem is after our uh, efforts, maybe the hundreds of thousands of parts, it finally met our expectation. And when one application released it, then the all, all other parts will migrate away. So it, it will not meet our expectation. Now, before November 11th, Ali will go through several times of uh, the whole circuit uh, through uh, prediction. So during the testing phase, even if it passed the, the verification, but upon release, we cannot guarantee the actual outcome can meet our expectation. So this is uh, uh, the release strategy from the uh, 
the the the, the meta. There's some release strategies provided, but no matter what strategy we use, part migration is part of it. So part of migration breaks uh, our expectation to the stability of uh, uh, the part. So we developed this. It's called a in-place update. So when releasing, we can upgrade the container on the very same spot instead of a, a recreating a part. So for upper stream users, you don't need to, you know, uh, you, you don't care about this part, but I only uh, give a brief introduction of it. So the within the advanced stateful set, if we set up uh, the partition to be one, then under this condition, the advanced controller will only upgrade upgrade the container, the corresponding container that you intend to modify. And after that, Kubernetes will identify the containers that hash value has changed. Then it will use new image, mirror image to create, to recreate the file. In the process, the static card containers in the part is in operation. That means it's unaffected. On the other way around, if we need to upgrade the static card container, it will not affect the, app the application container. And this is uh, what uh, the default model cannot support. In a template, if the, there are multiple uh, containers in a part, if your components and container is to upgrade the version or the mirror image, because it uses a, a, re, a part recreation strategy, it will cause the deletion of the, the old part and to create a new part. And this does not meet our expectation. We want uh, the upgrade of uh, uh, the, the component not affecting the, the business going online because it affects uh, the stability. For comparison, so, to put this simply, the default model and uh, our, our rolling update, in-place update can better cater to our, our needs, for example, to ensure the certainty of uh, the system. We know that uh, Docker and containers of mirror image, if it's upgraded on the very same spot, some of the layers can be continued to be used. So it improves the efficiency, even if it falls the buffer resource uh, demand. And there's another issue. Kubernetes, the default strategy for recreating it, is difficult for Ali to execute. For one, it's because of the uncertainty and also Ali's uh, sheer volume. Every day, our online app release reaches uh, 6,000, even 10,000 times. And each app, just like John has said, there are you know over 10,000 parts under each. If we were to recreate it in order to upgrade it, then there's a huge pressure upon the scheduler. So every release, it will distribute a tens of thousands of parts. And for the supply chain, for the service registration, it will cause a tremendous pressure. So through in-place update, we can uh, recreate the part lightweightedly without modifying, you know, re without a rescheduling. And now I'd like to say a few uh, things about uh, another uh, CAD we do. It's called a uh, side sidecar. Let's first to take a look at uh, the, the problems of the traditional uh, model. And be it, uh, you, you define a step set or uh, uh, whether the template includes your expected containers, like your business container, your sidecar container, your OM components, your agents, and other authorized components. And these components were all uh, defined in this block. For some small scale operation, it's fine. But for large scale operation, 
the first thing we encounter is is for the uh, operators, the managers. You know that uh, Ali have uh, tens over a hundred thousand uh, applications, and the operator of the application, they don't know that uh, which uh, sidecar set is required, and they don't want to uh, pay attention to such uh, uh, details related to OM. Uh, and the operators, business operator, they only care about uh, the stability of the system, the upgrade of the system. They don't care the sidecar uh, components. The second issue being that when we define the sidecar in uh, our working environment, the question is how to upgrade it. We know that Ali's workload, the, the, you know, hundreds of thousands of units. So when the component uh, main operator is is expected to manage hundreds of thousands of blocks, it is painstaking. Secondly, because uh, the application, the definition, they are within the same uh, block. So, when the upgrade of the container and components are in confliction, are conflicting with each other, it will also affect uh, the container stability. For example, when we are um, upgrading the application and the maintainer of uh, the components uh, identify the same problem, and he's modifying the uh, sidecar version of the stateful. Then these two actions will conflict with each other. So to cater to this problem, we developed a, a lightweight uh, development development tool. It does a very simple thing. The it separates the container and other components upgrade. So with the sidecar, the app maintainers, the it only needs to define and maintain the mirror image of the application. So application developers ha does not have to care about uh, uh, the sidecars. All the sidecar components are all defined within the sidecar sets. With uh, the, uh, we have dedicated uh, sidecar maintenance teams to say to the maintenance, and soon as uh, the, the the part. Uh, uh, scale uh, is, is scaling up. Every time the part is uh, scaling up, the sidecar set will have a admission well put to intercept this action, and it will compare whether the part level is in line with uh, uh, the selection criteria. If yes, then it will inject into the corresponding part, the sidecar as needed. For example, on Ali, we have oh, nearly 100, 1 million parts. And how can we manage those parts? It's very simple. We just need to define one sidecar. And we don't have to input the definition of the sidecards on all those pods online. And these sidecards are going to inject the containers we need in all the pods online. So in this way, it can successfully combine the sidecard combined with uh, separate from the business. First, we have utilized a developer. Developer do not have to pay attention to the sidecard container and the management of it. And also, the manager of the sidecard can easily use this sidecard set to manage all those sidecard containers online to work on the upgrading so that it will not affect the um, original business running. So here is a map that I've introduced. Once we have defined the sign cards, sign cards CRD and the operator's behaviors like that, it's going to inject the sign cards into all those um, the ports that fit the selected conditions. And the upgrades and delete of the sidecard will just fit in its mechanisms of working of these sidecards. For example, when the operator wants to manage it, it just needs to uh, match with the mirror of the sidecard. And then it's going to utilize its um, upgrade strategy to upgrade all the sidecard versions. And they don't have to, the managers do not have to utilize the um, 
the other resources to do that. So it would be a much easier way to couple. And we know that the sidecar set and Istio injects have some similarity, but there was some difference. Istio. It's based on the selected conditions and injected into the containers and have a specific location of, of injecting. And sidecars provide a rich set of functions. For example, there is a, a designed maps for the for the locks, and they and these components need to read the some data from it. So it needs the sidecast to share the con with the containers on data. So at this time, the sidecar has become um, a, a, a data mounting, data volume mounting tools that are able to share the data volumes with, with the container. And also, we are able to, in this way, we are able to gradually upgrade the online sidecar containers without awareness from the um, from the business people, and also the managers and the users of these containers are actually do not have to aware these upgrades, and we also have the local upgrade functions. Maybe you will not feel about it, these two functions. However, we have provided to an open source project that is open crew, open crews, and you can visit this. And this is the output. And all of the output functions have been proved internally in Alibaba. And also, it's based on some of the demand scenarios in, internally. And we are not going to 100% output uh, deliver all those functions. We're going to uh, gradually push some of the gen generic functions into the community so that we can build up the um, these functions together. I want to introduce the open cruise functions. And it ha it's uh, the cruise is the core function of the Open Cruise project, and also it has provided some of the basic and daily functions. One is broadcast job, and one is the cyber set, sidecar set. Maybe you haven't heard about the broadcast job before. We also have some of those jobs. It's similar to the combination um, of the between the two original functions. So once the job runs, then it will finish. It's going to dispatch different jobs to different different um, places across different nodes in the clusters. OK, I'm going to generally talk about the uh, advanced stay for set. We provide two functions. One is max available. And for example, and for the default um, stable set, if the proxy has choose parallel, however, when it's releasing, it's going to release ports one by one if we have 500 ports. Even though you use the partition to set it in, into 10 batches, but these 50 ports in each batch will still be released one by one. However, the max available are able to do the parallel release of these ports together. Uh, for example, I, all the 10 batches, in each batch, the uh, 50 ports will be um, released in a parallel way, so it will be 50 times accelerated during this process on up updating. Yes, it's in place update. Maybe you have been familiar with it because it's uh, next is sidecar set. We're going to inject the sidecat into the container that has at uh, the ports that has been selected based on some conditions. And by, com by combining with some containers, they are going to be run on each of the nodes across the classes. And we're going to stop here for today's talks. And it, you can contact me on WeChat. And also welcome all of you.